Gentlemen, ladies, what if Superman had decided to fly down, rip off the roof of the White House, grab the president right out of the Oval Office? Who would have stopped him? build a team of some very bad people who I think can do some good. Y'all jokers must be crazy. I'm not just one of y'all many toys. What? Don't tell me what to do. This is the deal. You disobey me, you die. Try to escape, you die. You got a boyfriend? You irritate or vex me. I'm known to be quite vexing. I'm just forewarning you. You die. You don't own me. If they get caught, we throw them under the bus. Don't turn me down, cause I never stay. What a ride! Let's play! Come on, get some better too? Let's go! Light it up! I love this guy. Not good. Don't forget, we're the bad guys. Are you sweet talking me? All of that chit chat's gonna get you hurt. The man in the back is ready to crack as he raises his hands to the sky. And the girl in the corner is everyone's fun. She can give you with a wink, wink of her eye. Yeah, I want to see something. Yes, I want to see something. I was just trying to get you there. You know how it feels, right? We good. What you having? Beer. Whiskey. What am I, 12? How about you, hot stuff? Water. That's a good idea, honey. Everybody. Joel, thanks so much for being here. It's my pleasure to be here. Congratulations on Suicide Squad. How many people here are excited to see Suicide Squad? All right. Yeah, it's thank you. wild, man. People are thrilled with this movie. They did an amazing job on these trailers. And I've seen the movie, and you're not going to be let down. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. No, I mean, I've been around for a minute, and, you know, been a part of a couple few, uh, you know, big movies, and uh, you know, nothing... I've been a part of comes close to this. It's just it just seems to really have captured the imagination. Did you feel that when you were on the set? Did you feel like when you guys were on the set that you were kind of capturing something a little bit different? It's funny because it, it was like uh, even f like right from the get go, the feeling was that this was something special. And uh, so I mean, we felt felt it right away on set. It, it was like the whole gel, the whole cast just gelled, and it was a. Uh, yeah, we, we, we felt right away that this was going to be something special, I think. It's also different for a sort of blockbuster comic book movie to be to have a writer and director on it. It's not written by three or four different people, and then a director is brought on. It's really David Ayer's vision. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And, and that's also, like, while we were shooting the film, even though it was, uh, you know, a big budget, you know, huge film, uh, you know, when you have the writer that's also directing it, you know, he'll, he'll just make up a scene. And then we'll do it, and he'll throw lines to you. So it was very creative, the whole, the whole, you know, filming process. So how did you, how did you start working on this movie? How did you get attached? Was it an audition, or did did they sort of was he familiar with your work and brought you in and wanted to meet with you? Well, like I was uh, following this project very jealously from the sidelines, and and just wondering like why aren't they calling me? And then and, you know I was seeing every cast member being added, and and then you know and then I didn't hear anything more, so I sort of figured that you know this is a uh, it's a wrap on this one for me. <laughs> and then and then Tom Hardy had to bail on it. So uh, <laughs> so then I, I uh, had a meeting with David, and and uh, my manager pulled a little bit of a fast one. So they, because uh, David was in Toronto, and so they lied and said that, oh, you know, Joel just happens to be in Toronto as well. So, you know, like, why don't they sit down? And that was real nice, because it's a very different thing of having a meeting with somebody. If you're both in the same town, and you just, like, stop by for a drink, then you're actually flying 
to another city and then, you know, spend the night and then you're going to have a drink with somebody. It puts more pressure on it. So Did you, like, overnight flight? They called you and they're like, get your ass to Toronto right now. That's exactly what happened. And, uh, and then we sat down and we really got along. And then, and then he wanted to see me audition for it. And, and uh, you know, I had a really good feeling while I was doing it. it it's also the way that he was directing. He, it, it was a real actor's director in that room that, that I respond really well to. And, and then I heard that uh, after I'd walked out, he to turned to the, the casting uh, lady and then he said, like, make the offer. Now, he, uh, I interviewed him when he made Fury and I interviewed some of the actors from Fury. And the stories from that set were that David liked to, at the beginning of the day, have all the actors wrestle each other and essentially fist fight on set before they started doing scenes. Was it like that on Suicide Squad at all? A bit more and, of a comfortable environment, maybe. And there was a lot of a lot of weird stuff going on. I mean, he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a special kind of guy. <laughs> David, I had this one scene with Kara, and um, that one of these scenes that he just made up, and he was like, "Okay, this is a situation like, this is the love of your life, and she just <laughs> died." This like, is actually a really solid David Ayer impression, yeah. to be honest. And uh, and then and so you know I had to do you know play this scene. I was at the hospital bed, and this was you know like just going to be uh, sort of a a, um, a fantasy in the film. But you know I had to go for it, and so you know went into this whole uh, this you know mad grief uh, emotion, and and I really went for it, and and it's you know it it's it's a bit humiliating and a, a little embarrassing to you know to go there with those kind of feelings in front of like 250 people that you don't really know and and you know there's like sounds coming out of your your mouth that are like that only come out in the very like most sad moments of your life so you know it was really good and I and I felt I, I got there so so I was like I was really in that moment and then you know and it was over you know David came up to me and he was like yeah, man, that take didn't make me hate you more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. And that was his. That was his version of a compliment. Yeah, yeah. But you know, then after a while, like he has a he has a really uh, tough facade, but he's actually just a big bleeding heart. Now talk about your character because I think one of the great things for for you in the film is that you get to have scenes with almost everybody. I mean, it's such a massive, diverse cast, and you get to have scenes with I think. Pretty much everybody, except for maybe one major character I don't think you get a scene with. Oh, I think I have a scene with everyone. Oh, do you have a scene with Mr. J? I don't remember. No, 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 that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's who I remember. That, that's the one, but everybody else you have really yeah. great scenes with. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Can you talk about uh, your character and uh, doing scenes with everybody? Yeah, well, he's sort of like, Flag is sort of the centerpiece of the story in a way. It's like, because his love story is also very intertwined with the, the plot of the film. So and I'm I'm sort of like the straight man. Like in a comedy, I would be the straight man. So all these other like crazy characters, they go off and, you know, they they do all their crazy stuff. And he's like, I'm a soldier, I do what soldiers do. And um, so I mean, it, it was fun to just be uh, you know, be in the center of it and and get to follow the whole story. When you uh get when you get signed up for a movie like this, you get the part, and you know Will Smith, Margot Robbie, all these uh, all these people are going to be in it. Does that feel like a lot of pressure for you, or does that just seem like it's going to be a good time? I mean, it's mostly inspiring. You know, of course, the you know you feel like you gotta you gotta perform. You know, this is gonna, especially when Will like uh, you know after like a after a month in, he's like, y'all know that this is gonna be the biggest film of my career, and so it's probably gonna be the biggest film of y'all's careers too. Uh, <laughs> so that uh, you know that's uh, that's that's a nice thing to hear when you're when you're working on a film. But um, for me, it it, it was it's mostly uh, mostly inspirational. Now, one of the things with Suicide Squad that I thought was so uh, sort of unfair and, and weird, which is that there was uh, news of reshoots a few months ago. And for some reason, when people reported on that, they reported on it as if that was like a negative thing, which is sort of absurd to me because any movie that has the money to do a reshoot will do a reshoot because it's really hard to get everything right the first time at bat because you run out of time when you're shooting a movie. Can you talk a little bit at all about those, about those reshoots? Yeah, I, I thought that also was pretty comedic. Uh, like every movie that has more than hundred million dollars in budget, um, they, you know, the the directors of these films, they have the luxury to, you know, they cut the film and then they, you know, get to think like, you know, what could we have done different? What could we add? Um, so almost all films uh, that are this big have uh, like a, a little 
uh, reshoot period. They have second unit, they have reshoot, they have tons yeah. of other things to ensure that the sort of vision is going to consistently expand and be the best that it can be. Yeah, and and the the sort of the narrative that uh, this had something to do with Batman versus Superman that was actually completely made up. It had nothing to do with that. But we, we mostly added action scenes, and it was, uh, and I think a lot of it didn't end up being in the actual film. Oh, really? So some of the reshoots that you guys did or not, they sort of shot it and were like, it's like, no. it's like little bits and pieces that gets added into it, but. Um, there was no r real like scenes that were added. Now Zack Snyder uh, and his his wife, who sort of did uh, the Superman movie and Batman versus Superman, and are kind of the EPs of the entire sort of Justice League, Suicide Squad, DC universe at Marvel, are uh, as I said EPs of all these. How involved with uh, Suicide Squad were they? I mean, uh, I said I saw Zack once on set. I think I said hi. Uh, no, actually, I didn't see him on set. I actually just saw him at Comic Con. Um, not this year, but last year. Um, I if they were involved, it was in the post-production. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, prior to Suicide Squad, you were in The Killing, right? And you had a movie called uh, Easy Money, which was kind of your, your, would you call that your breakthrough? It was my break, sort of my breakthrough in Sweden, yeah. I had a couple of things coming out at the same time as that came out, but that was, uh, that was the biggest movie of the year in Sweden, and, and it, was, uh, it was one of those sort of like, uh, not similar to this, but it, 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 was a, it was a book that was a bestseller that everybody had read and everybody was really looking forward to the film. And then the film ended up sort of exceeding people's expectations. So, and, and I was the lead in that. And then Martin Scorsese got involved in that as well in presenting it in the, in the U.S., right? Yeah, yeah, he put his name on it uh, when, when they, uh, in the U.S. theatrical release. And I mean, that was, that was really nice for us that very rarely does a Swedish film get a U.S. theatrical release, so, so we were all really happy and proud of that. Coming from a movie like that, where, you're, where it's kind of an action thriller, did you feel like you were going to sort of become an action star? I mean, you in some ways have become an action star in the, in the U.S. with Robocop and Suicide Squad. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't really thought about it like that. I kind of, um, I take the role, you know, I, I see what you know what's sort of offered to me, and then and you know and what projects people are interested in me for, and and then uh, you know I, try, I I what I try to do as different things as possible, um, different roles, and then uh, you know the genre kind of just ends up being what it is. I, I don't think of genres. I think more of like what kind of roles do I want to play. And when you took the role of of RoboCop, I imagine you were a fan of the original Paul Verhoeven. Oh yeah, yeah, huge fan. It's like the greatest, I mean, it's one of the greatest comic sci-fi movies of Amazing. all time. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to sort of get drunk and remember scenes <laughs> from that movie and yeah, go over yeah. when the guy gets covered in toxic waste and he gets blown yeah. up by the car. It was brutal. It was yeah. brutal. So when you signed on to that movie, were you worried about what you were going to be doing for the, to the sort of memory of the original or were you sort of confident in the, in the reboot? Because I, I have to say, I thought the RoboCop reboot was pretty good and, and somewhat misunderstood by, by the public. I thought it actually had intention to it. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought, you know, the the ambition was a really honest one and, and it wasn't one that, you know, you just wanted to sort of carbon copy the old one and, and put some effects on it and sort of, uh, you know, throw it out to an audience to make a quick buck. There was actually a real thought and idea of why it made sense to to use the, the concept of RoboCop and, and present it in a, in a modern day setting. Um, you know, like uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, but, you know, when I look back at it, there, there was a I mean, I got into a lot of trouble. The first interview I did for uh, for Robocop, somebody asked me, like, is it going to be R-rated? And my answer was, like, of course, it's got to be R-rated. <laughs> and then, and then, and then I, like, I looked at my phone, and I had, uh, like, a couple hours later, and I had, like, 25 missed phone calls. And, like, the studio is furious. It's PG-13. Oh and uh, so, you know, I shouldn't have said that. But, um, you know, I think, I think those were, you know, decisions that were, that were made with that in that uh, – Franchise that were the you know the the reboot that they didn't really understand the uh, you know the fan base of it and didn't understand what people loved about it and I think that you had to if you were going to remake RoboCop you should have been more um, re you know respect the, the the canon of it in a way like the the black suit was a bad idea you know there were there was a lot of decisions that were being made and, and you know for me it was my first film so I didn't really have the confidence to voice my opinion in the way that I would have if I'd, you know, redone the film now. 
And, and I think for Jose, the director, that stuff didn't matter that much. It was the, the psychological story and the political story that he was interested in telling. So, uh, so you know, when people around the art direction, you know, had ideas of that nature, he was, you know, oh, fine. You know, it's not like his, it wasn't the biggest, his biggest interest in, in making that film. So, you know, it, I'm still very proud of it, but I, I can see and understand why it didn't hit home in the way that it could have. Well, and let's be real, in this, uh, in this age of movie making, there's no way anything like the original RoboCop, that hard R no, and, no. That, and, and cost that much money. The could sense get of humor in that, that one, too. The sense of humor in the original was, it was a very, you know, special tone that, that Verhoeven, w you People know, People would be so offended if, if, th if that movie was made right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 very offended. It's outrageous and it crazy. Is, um, so that yeah, I I I love I liked RoboCop a lot, and I love what they did with the Samuel L. Jackson character and yeah. that, and sort of referencing a kind of Glenn Beck model of, of yeah. justice in the future. That is really smart. I thought so and too. Somewhat misunderstood. I'm going to open up to the audience for questions. Does anyone have any questions out here in the audience? Right there. Hi. Hey. Um, very excited about this movie, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, I can see. <laughs> I was just wondering, do you have any, do you share any characteristics with your character flag? Sorry, what, what was that? Um, do you share any characteristics with your character flag? I think I'm also a really stubborn person, and, um, uh, and yeah, so the flag is very stubborn, and so am I. Next question. Hi. Hey. I wanted to know, do you think we'll see a sequel to Suicide Squad? You know, if the audience wants to see it, I think there's going to come a sequel. It's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> you probably can't say it, but I'm going to say it. It's a pretty safe bet. <laughs> so, hey. so my question is, um, how, is it, how was it working with Jared Leto, who got lost in that character, and, and, and anybody who's played a Joker has actually gotten lost in that character in many ways? Just how was it working with him? Well, there are stories that he sent you guys, like he sent everybody weird presents on set or something like yeah, that. What did, what, what did you get? I mean, I got, I got a couple of used condoms. <laughs> and, and somebody asked me, like, so, so what, what, what presents did you send to him? And I'm like, when somebody sends you used condoms, like, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. End of transmission, like, yeah, it's no, done. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also got some anal beads and a couple of dildos. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I gave them to Cara Delvine. <laughs> What did Cara Delevingne get? Did you guys all talk about the gifts that you yeah, got? Yeah, I mean, we all got similar stuff. Margot got a live rat. It was, it was funny, we were like in this rehearsal room, uh, all the actors except for Jared, uh, we, were, we were rehearsing our scenes, and then the guy who played Mr. Frost, uh, Jim Parrick, uh, he was, you know, the, he, he's the, the Joker's sidekick. So he was off, you know, in crazy town with, with Jared, and, uh, and then he, he came back, he was the one who, you know, I have a present from Mr. J, and then he, you know, gave Margo the rat. And then, and then the, a couple of days later, he comes by with a big dead pig, and just throws it on the table, and he's like, this is a present from Mr. J. And then uh, Jai Courtney and I, you know, because we're 12 years old, we were like looking at each other like, we're just gonna let him do this? <laughs> and then, and then uh, you know, Jim walks out and then the corridor outside, and then, so we like run out after him, and you know, because we're idiots, we like drag him back into the room, and then we like take, tape him up, put tape, we put the pig over his shoulders, and shove an apple into his mouth, and Margot writes like SS in his forehead, and me being Jewish, I was like, that's, I'm not cool with that. But, uh, <laughs> I was like, um, but then she put a heart around it, so I was like, okay, people are gonna get a Suicide Squad. And then we took a picture and sent it back to Mr. J. And uh, so we, we had, you know, little games going back and forth like that. So, Jer so Jared was never actually involved with your, your re read throughs or anything like that, or script readings? He kind of stayed, stayed away from everybody? Uh, he was, I think, you know, I imagine he was in some dungeon torturing strippers or something. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Next question. Hey, so I heard that the cast members each tattooed the word squad, I think, on your wrist. Yeah. Um, who did you tattoo and who tattooed yours? Well, uh, Will did mine, <laughs> and uh, I actually didn't do anyone else. Margo did most of them. Um, yeah, it, everybody, you know, was gonna get to. I was first, and then everybody went ahead and did these like little it, teeny teeny ones, like on their feet. And I was like, I, I thought we were doing like. They were like, no, nah, we were just doing small ones. I was like, oh. Wait, can I see yours? Yeah. Can I see what you got? <laughs> yeah. 
Hope the movie works. Everybody, <laughs> so everybody had a little, like a little S, and you have yeah, exactly. squad. Well, Mar Margo, uh, Jai's assistant, he he got the first tattoo, <laughs> and uh, Margo started out, and it was like swa, oops. <laughs> <laughs> so, and so she crossed it out and then squad. So he has like a SW that's all crossed over and then squad. And then <laughs> uh, I think we have time for one more question. Hello, I can't wait to see you in this movie. But my question was for uh, Run, all Run All Night. I know mm. you worked with Liam Nielsen. Did yeah. you learn anything from him? And is there any funny, you know, on set things? Um, yeah, I learned that if, you be, if you're Liam Neeson, you can decide when you quit. <laughs> like we were shooting, we were out in Yonkers shooting really late, and uh, and we were like running up and down a stair, a staircase that they build with um, uh, with a bunch of extras, and we we're running up and down, and 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 then you know when when we we, we were at the top and we were gonna walk down, or we were gonna stay at the top, we were gonna shoot again, and then Liam started to walk down, and, and I'm like Liam, uh, I th we're, we're going again, and he's like, No, Joel, there's a storm coming. And I'm like, uh, excuse me? He's like, there's a storm coming, and uh, we need to go home. And I'm like, well, what's, what's, what's going on? And uh, so I stick, you know, I'm not going to shoot it alone. So I, I walk down with him, and then our, uh, our, our director from Barcelona is like, yeah, Liam, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and uh, and Liam, Liam is like, there's a storm coming, Jaume. We need to go home. <laughs> and um, and, I'm, and I, I keep walking with Liam. I was like, oh, so, so you're, you're leaving now? He's like, there's a storm coming. All these lads, they've been working since 5, five o'clock at, at night. There's a storm coming, and we need to go home. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, bye. Like, I know I'm not going home. <laughs> I'm just going to be working with his stand-in. And, um, yeah, so that was, I was like, so you can, you can self-rap? You can just quit? You can do that? Okay, that changes everything. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, you, you can do that when you're Liam Neeson, not when you're Joel Kinnaman. That's a, a, a goal to work Joel Kinnaman up to at that point. Yeah. Uh, you and Will Smith in the film have a pretty contentious relationship for the majority of the film. How did you guys work with that? Did you try to maintain that off camera as well, or was it just something that you guys sort of, as actors, do on camera? Yeah, I mean, we, we became pretty good friends on this film. Uh, I mean, it started out pretty bad. Uh, like, the first scene we had, um, you know, I, uh, the... The director, he sort of like pumped me up. He was like, you got to like stand up to him, you know? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to stand up to him. He was like, no, I mean, you got to stand up to him. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to fucking stand up to him. <laughs> and uh, and then so we had this like confrontation scene, and that was like the first scene that we had. And I had this gun in my hand, and, and he like, he pushed me a little bit, and then I got pissed, and then I like gun butted him in the forehead. <laughs> and, uh, and Will, he's like, it's like that, that, that really hurt, <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh shit, and and, he, and I saw it was just starting to swell up, and uh, and Will was like, you know, um, if you're gonna hit me with the gun, use the plastic one, <laughs> and I and I just saw, and I saw like it was just like swelling, it was like turning into a unicorn, and uh, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna get fired, America's gonna hate me. Um, but uh, and then and then I remembered that you know I'd seen Ali and I was like oh she's gonna kick my ass, <laughs> um, but it, it he's he's such a nice guy so he um, he forgave me for that. Uh, Ayer David Ayer is very very good at directing those moments between men where things get really contentious. There are moments in the movie where I thought between you and Will Smith where I was like I was like there's David Ayer that's him right there and it's like two men getting in each other's faces about to fight, I'm curious like what he does with his actors to sort of find those moments because they feel very real. Yeah, I mean, uh, like he, with Viola Davis, uh, I work with a very different Viola Davis than you, s you know, when you see her in The Help. That was not the Viola Davis I got to know. Um, She's great in the film. She She's was really like great. a bad bitch in this film. <laughs> uh, so she'd always be like behind, like, I, I uh, when I when I did my scenes and then David was always like conspiring with her and I was like, uh, what are they gonna do now? And then, and then I'd start my scene and then Viola'd stand behind the camera and like, yeah, you little bitch, <laughs> you little punk ass bitch, <laughs> like what? You fucking pussy? What are you gonna do, you little pussy? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Wait, Viola Davis. Viola Davis. I mean, she's a gangster and. Um, <laughs> So I, you know, there was this constant humiliation on this film that was uh, 
Yeah, that David was instigating. And Viola you was were at the receiving reveling. end of. Huh? You were at the receiving end of. Yeah, completely. Did you ever, were you ever like, can I humiliate this person? Is it my turn to humiliate someone now? And yeah, David there was always like, no. a no to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, uh, congratulations on Suicide Squad, man. Thank you so much for being here. The movie Thanks comes so out much. August 5th. I don't have to tell you, you're all going to see it. Congratulations, man. Thanks a lot.